Ah, the Insecticons. I've gone over my distaste for robots that turn into animals before, but this may be the worst example of all. As their name implies, they turn into giant bugs. Not only does this violate the whole robots in disguise principle, I mean at least the dinobots are the approximate size and shape of dinosaurs, but they hardly even look like insects anyway. I'm fairly certain that up to this point the toy designers started with the alternate mode and worked backwards to the robot, but the Insecticons are just robots with weird silvery bits and dubious antennae protruding from wherever there's room. Apparently they rode along to Earth with Megatron four million years ago, but slipped away in an escape pod. Let's ignore the fact that neither they nor Megatron recognize one another. Let's also ignore that they weren't actually asleep for four million years like the other guys, so they've apparently been terrorizing humans since before the Paleolithic era. Oh, and be sure to ignore that they seem to subsist on organic crops instead of Energon like any other self-respecting Transformer. We may as well ignore all this because, well, the writers sure did. With the astounding sense of cosmic coincidence that governs the world of the Transformers, both the Autobots and Decepticons learn of the existence of the Insecticons simultaneously and organize teams to go investigate. Megatron, as I mentioned before, doesn't know who they are, but has the good sense to recognize that jaggedy purple thing they all wear, so he attempts to recruit them to his cause. And in the manner of speech so unique to the Insecticons, they agree. In that case, it's my honor to ask you to help us destroy these animated scrap piles. Scrap piles. When I was a kid, I thought the way those guys echoed the last word they said, along with that extra bit of modulation on their voices, was a bit creepy. As an adult, I tend to concur with my younger self. At first, anyway. It seems that in the ensuing 25 years, I've developed a much stronger sense of impatience, and by the end of this episode, I want to punch the person who came up with this hackneyed little piece of auditory torture. Meanwhile, the Autobots are racing to the scene as well. As they're driving through Bali, they run into a procession of... foreign people of some kind. As far as I can tell, two types of humans live in the Transformers universe. Blue-collar workers and primitive brown people with funny accents. Oh, and I guess there's Chip Chase, but he's kind of an anomaly. This group seems squarely positioned within the second category, and everyone's feeling much too polite, or perhaps embarrassed, to ask them to move out of the way for a minute. So instead, they decide to tunnel under. You know, I was very accepting of the fact that the Autobots tunneled under the ocean a few episodes back, but by this point I think I grasped the concept that they're capable of digging their way around the world like Bugs Bunny. You really don't need to invent ridiculous new things for them to tunnel under. Unless you're just trying to pad for time. In which case, carry on. And so, eventually, the Autobots get to fight the Insecticons, who, between the three of them, have so many unusual abilities that it's not really a stretch to just give up and call them magic. I mean, apart from the usual assortment of beams and projectiles, there's mind control, there's their ability to munch right through metal skin, and there's that one guy who can kick really hard. I didn't think that last thing was a particularly big deal, but the show told me about half a dozen times, so I'm just going to go ahead and accept kicking as a serious threat. Oh, and then there's this thing where they can produce infinite clones of themselves. And I'm not talking about those lame holograms everyone's always making. I'm talking about fully functional, independently operating duplicates. And somehow they still lose. These guys are, best I can tell, infinitely powerful. I have absolutely no comprehension how the ability to create your own completely obedient army with superpowers ranks you somewhere on the second tier of Decepticons. The Insecticons, as written in this episode, should make quick work of the Autobots, then of Megatron and any Decepticons who gave them lip, and then, as an afterthought, the human race. But I've seen all the episodes after this, and they're never treated as anything but a nuisance. I, I just don't even have the words. The story ends in an oil rig, but I think at this point you don't even need me to tell you that. Frankly, I'm tired of saying the words power plant and oil rig, so just assume from this point forward, unless I say otherwise, that every episode features a scene at one or the other. It's probably not healthy for me to get so angry at a children's cartoon from the 80s, is it? Yeah, this is usually where the science lesson goes. But if they're just going to be magical and, and just completely not even pretend that there's science anymore, then I'm not going to bother. Come back next week. Uh-oh. What I wouldn't give for a laser-powered fly swatter. Swat this, you! Oh,